Hi, I'm Margaret Hoagland, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Cyos Technology, here with a prediction for 2026. IT professionals continue to struggle with cybersecurity challenges, and many of them will be turning to high availability software as a key part of their cybersecurity planning. Software like Cyos LifeKeeper and DataKeeper products allow customers to test their upgrades and patches in a real world like setting and to deploy them with near zero downtime, critical elements of a cybersecurity strategy. And so we see an increase in the number of customers that are using their high availability clustering as part of their cybersecurity and patch management. Thank you. Let's cut through the noise. AI dominates every conversation, but here's what nobody's saying. The bill comes due in 2026. AI companies can't keep subsidizing token costs as pilots. In real production workloads, you will start burning tokens, and your CFO is going to ask, how much is this going to cost? Meanwhile, we're still embarrassingly bad at optimization, rags, MCP, whatever. None of it creates predictable outcomes. That means economics will force companies to reconsider owning their own bare metal instead of paying per token. And that's not because it's trendy, but to save money. Plus, security, control, and data sovereignty aren't optional at scale. The same story is playing out in cloud versus virtualization, driven by VMware license increases. What do AI and VMs have in common? the potential for Kubernetes to become the common control platform. We're seeing strategic alignment here in enterprise conversations that will heat up in 2026. Virtualization teams running VMs with Kubevert, VMs in AI running CPU workloads with Kubeflow, and platform teams still focused on app devs. Different problems, different teams, and the same foundational platform. But there's a storm on the horizon. A decade of cloud killed bare metal expertise. 2026 is when enterprises rediscover, painfully, that rebuilding from scratch is an unrewarding place to spend your mental cycles. That means budget stress, failed deployments, million-dollar GPU clusters sitting idle, and engineering teams drowning in bare metal complexity instead of shipping features. The companies that win will rebuild that operational muscle and partner strategically instead of do-it-yourselfing all that infrastructure. For 2026, I am both excited and nervous about the IT challenges that AI and virtualization will add into an already challenging profession. What we've started to see towards the end of 25, and I'm sure we will see surging in 2026, is adversaries started to take advantage of Igentic and AI agents in order to scale up their attacks and make them more sophisticated. So you will start to see more lateral movement attacks. You will start to see a much larger scale, and you will see attacks that are bypassing your existing threshold-based controls. And in order to stay ahead of all that, my other prediction is that organizations, enterprise, service providers, no matter what it is, will have to start adopting those technologies as well. And what we will see moving forward in 2026 is agents fighting agents and AI fighting AI. And I think that is just going to get bigger and bigger as we moving towards 27 and 28. And the cybersecurity world is going to look completely different. Now, companies that will stay behind and will not go down that path will be challenged significantly with their ability to stay relevant and protect themselves against those type of attacks. So do you want to stay behind or do you want to lead the pack? It's up to you in 2026. Hey everyone, I'm Andy Sirwich, a security evangelist here at Hornet Security, and these are my predictions for the cybersecurity space in 2026. 
Now, to start off, my first two predictions have to do with everyone's favorite buzzword, and that is AI. Surprise, right? Well, AI is having very real impacts in the cybersecurity space. And, uh, you know, the first place that we're seeing it centers around adoption and governance. What we're seeing is that, uh, you know, IT departments, businesses, and shadow end users are adopting AI at a faster rate than security teams are, you know, being able to get governance in place. And that's only going to get worse in 2026. I mean, vendors are not really helping that issue either because we're very much seeing a innovation first, security second type of mindset. And sure, there are some vendors out there that are trying to, you know, help administrators keep their hands wrapped around it. But this is a continuing issue that I see going well into 2026. Now, we also have agentic AI, right? The ability for AI to go off and do things on our behalf, even long sequence of events, right? And we're seeing some evidence in the industry of threat actors using agentic AI to, uh, you know, do portions of an attack chain or theoretically an entire attack chain. And what this is doing is it's lowering the barrier to entry for threat actors. Uh, no longer do threat actors have to have super deep expertise in tech in order to launch attacks. AI and agentic AI are going to, like I said, lower that barrier to entry. And not only lower that barrier to entry, it's going to accelerate attacks for those that know how to use it well and for those threat actors that do have a high degree of technical aptitude. And that is an issue that we're only going to see continue into 2026. Which now brings me to my last prediction. I think we're going to see multi-factor authentication via newer advanced methods like FIDO2, uh, pass keys, things like that are going to become rather mandatory in a lot of cases because we've seen a large increase in the amount of adversary in the middle style attacks utilizing uh, tools like you know, Evilgenics and, and other phishing kits where uh, the attacker is basically siphoning off tokens and credentials you know, mid-login, right? And so the industry is going to have to pivot to phishing resistant MFA to battle that. And I think we'll see that play out throughout 2026. And with that, those are my predictions for 2026. Thanks for watching. Hello. I'm Alistair Parr, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer here at Sparrow Intelligence. Now, what we're predicting for 2026 relates to masking intent through obfuscation techniques. We've seen that threat actors are continuing to use the same tradecraft as it's proven effective for many years now, and specifically looking at malicious behavior through VPNs and proxies. Now, we've seen organizations been looking and yearning for years on ways to deal with this. Now, when we look at bad intent interacting with digital assets, we're seeing three core pillars you have agentic behavior, obfuscation, and geography. So for our first prediction, we're expecting a rise in organizations choosing to proactively prevent agentic AI traffic from interacting with their assets. Agentic tools are getting more sophisticated and they're beginning to do things like create accounts, make purchases, and engage directly with user flows. This is in addition to things like content scraping and indexing for model training. Now, orgs will begin to leverage tools to detect and block this behavior at that first interaction. Our second prediction relates to obfuscation through VPNs and residential proxies. Now, res proxies are highly valued amongst threat actors. They provide a more obscure way of interacting with targets, and they're less likely to be detected. And res proxies are increasing in prevalence into 2026, with mobile apps, home IoT, and media devices often reselling bandwidth, and they're bearing user consent in Ts and Cs. So 26 will see threat actors continue to leverage these as they become increasingly commercialized. It's making it harder to pinpoint malicious versus genuine behavior. Our third prediction relates to geographic obfuscation. And user bases are becoming increasingly savvy in leveraging VPNs to mask their geo. And we're seeing it in situations such as media services, as well as state country level regulations on content consumption. The explosion of usage in 2025 will continue into 2026, and organizations will continue to invest in more sophisticated tools to detect geomasking, or they're going to face increasing regulatory pressures. 
A final prediction for 26 applies to all of those user obfuscation techniques, and it relates to how organizations leverage their tool sets to defend against those threats. Now, user friction as a term is increasingly becoming the topic amongst teams, and there's an emphasis on passive security. Digital asset security will introduce increasing amounts of friction, and that's in the form of user validation, capture tools, and two-factor authentication. Historically, the quality of data for detecting user obfuscation has not been sophisticated enough to support that type of workflow. But into 2026, we're expecting more security teams to have access to refined friction-centric workflows. Now, generally we're seeing the tradecraft is evolving and 2026 will continue to see obfuscation being a great indicator of intent. And security teams are broadly evolving to deal with this continued threat. Thank you.